Ever heard of sex hormone binding globulin, also known as SHBG? Maybe you've seen that term on a lab test and you've wondered what the heck that means. It's possible that your hormone doc has mentioned your SHBG is high and that's why your hormones, especially testosterone, might not be working as well as you want them to. I'm Steve Goldring, the hormone pharmacist from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those resources are about hormones and hormone optimization. In this video, we're gonna to begin to understand the complex world of sex hormone binding globulin, also referred to as SHBG. What is SHBG? How can high or low levels of SHBG affect the action of your hormones? We'll also take a look at some practical ways that you can adjust your SHBG level and maybe decide whether that might be something we wanna do or not. Okay, let's imagine your body is a city that's filled with big office buildings. Inside all those skyscrapers are millions of little offices where all the work, all the business of life gets done. Imagine SHBG as an Uber service that moves people around in this bustling city. In the city, we have two types of Uber passengers, businessmen representing testosterone and business women who represent estradiol. It's important to note that whether you're a man or a woman, you have both testosterone and estradiol in your bustling city. Both of these passengers, business people, need to get to their offices, which are like the cells in your body, to perform their essential jobs and keep that economy running smoothly. Now here's a little bit of a twist. The male passengers, testosterone, they're much more resistant to getting out of the Uber compared to the female passengers or estradiol. When these passengers are riding in the Uber, they're bound. They're unable to really do any significant work. Maybe they can make some calls, but they can't really get much work done. Once the Uber drops them off at their office building, they can enter the office and start working. Those are called free hormones. In this video, we'll explore how SHBG, our Uber service, affects the availability or freedom of testosterone and estradiol in our bodies. We'll talk about what happens with both high and low SHBG levels. We'll look at practical ways that diet and lifestyle can have an influence on SHBG. Plus, we'll begin to understand how difficult it is to manage SHBG without some expert guidance. I want to talk a little bit about the highs and lows of SHBG. Imagine if we have a whole bunch of Ubers around, lots of SHBG, that's going to rein in the action of testosterone, making it less able to do its work. A high SHBG level means more hormones are bound. They're stuck inside those Ubers. This can be a good thing in, for example, women with PCOS. These women often get maybe unwanted hair growth from overactive testosterone. Instead of trying to decrease their total testosterone level, one strategy might be to increase SHBG and reduce the amount of free testosterone that can actually cause that unwanted hair growth. Higher SHBG or more Ubers can help reduce unwanted side effects of testosterone and, to a lesser extent, estradiol. On the other hand, low levels of SHBG, fewer Ubers, means that there's more testosterone available to work in the offices, which are your cells. There's still the same total amount of testosterone, but there's more businessmen and businesswomen that are unbound. They're available to get their work done in their offices. Lower SHBG might be helpful in men or women who maybe struggle with low libido issues. They might be taking some supplemental form of testosterone, and a lower SHBG might mean that testosterone is better able to improve their sexual function, their libido, arousal, and desire for both men and women. The goal for SHBG, just like hormones, should be not too high and not too low, but just right. One of the most important lessons about the SHBG continuum from low to high is that low SHBG is bad for your metabolic health. Low SHBG increases the risk for insulin resistance. There's evidence that carbohydrates, high glycemic foods that raise your blood sugar, and even sugar itself can drive SHBG down, and that might seem like a good short-term goal, 
But in the long term, excess carbs and sugar can lead us down the path to much more serious diseases, type 2 diabetes, heart disease. High SHBG is actually good for metabolic health to a certain extent. Maintaining just right levels of SHBG is crucial for overall health. That's why it's so important to seek expert guidance from somebody who really understands how to manage those SHBG levels. Well, you can influence your SHBG levels through the ways you eat and through your lifestyle. Here are just a few ways that we can help achieve those just right Uber numbers and just right SHBG levels. Fiber-rich foods like whole grains, fruits and vegetables, those can help boost SHBG production. Fiber probably has the biggest impact on SHBG of any foods, but flax seeds contain phytoestrogens that might increase SHBG levels. Green tea and nuts and seeds may also have some ingredients that help to boost your SHBG. There are a few foods that can lower your SHBG, at least to some extent. Sugary foods and refined carbohydrates, as we've already discussed, those can lower your SHBG levels. Excessive protein intake, while protein is important, theoretically too much can lower SHBG. Uh, excessive intake of olive oil and avocado oil theoretically might lower SHBG. There are some lifestyle factors like a lack of physical activity or being sedentary can lead to lower SHBG levels. Too much alcohol, moderate drinking tends to boost SHBG, but too much alcohol can actually drop it. There are certain medications that can have an impact on generally lowering SHBG. Uh, thyroid, both low thyroid and high thyroid hormones can affect SHBG levels. While all these factors can influence SHBG levels, the impact can vary from one person to the next. It's also good to note that some of these levers we pull to change SHBG are much bigger than other levers. Things like losing weight and adding more testosterone make a big difference in SHBG. Protein, fats, and even carbs make much smaller differences. That makes it even more important to really trust a specialist who understands both hormones and the action of SHBG. Understanding and managing your SHBG levels is one of the keys to optimizing your hormones and your health. As I've mentioned, you can influence your SHBG levels and improve your overall well-being, but it's also a really good idea to find some help with that process. My recommendation is that you consult a hormone optimization specialist to help you optimize both your hormone levels and your sex hormone binding globulin levels. Getting both of those just right helps assure that you have the right amount of hormones, especially testosterone, available to keep your city running smoothly. Visit my website at simplehormones.com slash referral. You can fill out my referral request form on that page to see if there's a hormone specialist in your area, and I'll check my database and get back with you. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell to get notified anytime I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk with you again soon.